Well, hello there and good day. Thank you for joining me. I am Frost PDP, and today we're talking about Crusader Kings 2. I'm going to do something unusual for what this channel is about. I've just loaded in as the character King Murchad of Mumu in the 1066 start, and I'm going to do sort of a guide to how certain buttons work, certain tabs work. Um, these particular buttons up in the top left which is where you spend a surprising amount of this game, which is a great game and I love it. And it's all about ruling a kingdom and creating a dynasty and a lineage and all of that. And that's all very important. But as a new player, you might be looking at this going, what's going on? In fact, you probably even started with this view and you're wondering, huh, where even am I? I know I'm Mumu, I know that's that, but like, huh? Well, first off, hit the W key. This brings up what's called a political map mode or realms in this case. And it demonstrates very clearly where the borders of each country are. Now, in this case, there's a lot of different green provinces in Ireland, but Ireland is green, so just roll with it, right? We're Mumu. We're this guy. We know that because we know our shield is this shield. We click on it, and it brings us to our duchy. We always want to have the de jure enabled so that you know what the realm is, but that's a bit sidetracky. And for other reasons, I'm not going to talk about the character page very much today because, frankly, they're going to be changing it with the Holy War expansion. Holy Fury, I should say. And I don't want to go through all of this just for it to be changed. And I want to tell you that a thing is going to be in a place and then have it move on to you. The only things I'm going to point out are that you are this character here. You are always going to click your portrait and go to your character. This is you. The blue ring with ribbons signifies that you are a duke tier character, a petty king in this case. There are other petty kings, like this guy, just as there are earls or counts, which have a thinner blue ring. There's also kings, which have gold. And there's emperors, which, I mean, good luck finding one these days, but they have this purple gemstone thing. Hi friends, I interrupted this video to add in just a quick graphic for you to look at that lists the five main tiers of vassals. It doesn't count courtiers because they don't own land, but from baron to emperor, it lists landowners, who can be a vassal to who, and just generally spells out how the feudalism system in Crusader Kings 2 works. Uh, the colors won't always match depending on what religion the characters are, what specific type of vassal they are, if they're a republic, or if they're a tribe, or if they're a nomad, but this gives you a good overview of basically how things work. The higher up the list you are, the more people you can have under you, but the more people you have to manage as well. Thank you. Are that you are this character here. You are always going to click your portrait and go to your character. This is you. The blue ring with ribbons signifies that you are a duke tier character, a petty king in this case. There are other petty kings, like this guy, just as there are earls or counts, which have a thinner blue ring. There's also kings, which have gold, and there's emperors, which, I mean, good luck finding one these days, but they have this purple gemstone thing. So that's just a quick way to tell which tier a character is. There's also barons who have a bronze or copper tier, but that's getting off track. Today we're just talking about the general layout of the game, what to expect when you log in with your first character, etc., etc. Up on the top bar here are alerts. Uh, these are typically things that you need to take care of or at least be aware of. So special minor titles are grantable, meaning you can grant special titles. Where do you find that? We'll talk about that later. Pick an ambition. If you click this button, it takes you to the character page, which does you no good, because if you don't know where the ambition button is, you're a little lost. Ambition button is here, and ambitions are just things you can try to do that will make you benefit. You might want to become the king of Ireland. You might want to save up money first, because if you're a king, it costs more money to save up to get this done, and this gives you a benefit when you complete it. So these are all things you can do to get extra benefits. There are directions for your character. It doesn't really matter what you click. It matters what direction you want to take. See this thing? Pick a focus. Well, it brings up this window. And if you have no idea what these buttons do, let's go through them real quick. Because I don't think they're going to change much. Business 
is stewardship plus two and city vassal opinion. Each of these buttons has a special effect you can find by hovering over. It'll bring up a little tooltip that'll tell you what you need to do, what you need to be, etc. It does not tell you what specific random events you might get. For example, most famously, the hunting focus enables you to hunt what's called the white stag, sometimes the white bear or tiger, and it's just a uh, random number generated possible outcome. Important note, Crusader Kings 2 relies a lot on random number generations or random event generations. So keep that in mind. Uh, which of these you pick will depend on what your goals for your character are. You can change them every five years. Uh, some of them give you better health, combat stats, seduction allows you to become a seducer type guy where you go around and try to spread your seed. Kind of an important part of a dynastic strategy game. Um, all of these things are kind of important. Any one of them is a good one to pick. Um, it all sort of depends on what your stats are here. So really quickly, there are five major statistics. There's diplomacy, which is blue, martial, which is red, and general deals with military stuff, stewardship, which is green and deals with managing a realm, intrigue, which is purple and deals with sneaky stuff, and learning, which is gray, which deals with smarts. You will have an education trait for your character that indicates what they're generally good at. It's this little box right here. This is going to be moved in Holy Fury, so don't worry about it too much. There's also your religion and your government type. Your, this character is Catholic. He's from the Ua Brian. I can't pronounce that family. He's feudal. A lot of this stuff is going to be moved. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to pick for this character the... Oh, let's go with the... Um, he's 39. He's getting kind of old. We're going to go with the hunting focus just for no reason in particular. Arrange marriage. Marriages are a really important part of this game. Uh, you want to try to find someone who is an heir to something. Princesses are good, but they can't always inherit. You want to find someone who clearly is an heir to something, if you can. If you can't, you might want to marry for an alliance. Um, stuff like that is important. Since we're not going to be doing a real campaign, the other way to decide on who to marry is statistics. Who is going to have the best stats to boost up what you need? Right now, I need Marshall and Stewardship. This lady is 43. She's a little too old for that. This lady has no children, so there's no risk of any conflicts with our heirs. And, yeah, she's a courtier in Saxony. She's not that prestigious, but we're going to pick her because she's got good stats. Her stats add up to our stats. Just something to know. And that's good. We have a child. We have an heir. He also needs to be married. We can marry him to a princess with a claim on a kingdom. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. If we have an opportunity to press her claim, that can really strengthen our dynasty. Again, we're probably not doing any of this. But it's just important to note that this is stuff to do. Uh, setting your crown focus basically just means your country is going to focus on things. You set that at your capital. That's been taken care of. That's been taken care of. I can press a de jure ducal claim. Okay, so that means... I can try to make a war for this, which I would do in a little while. But I don't want to overload you with information. So here's the very basics of your character sheet that we've gone over. You are this guy. This is your religion, ambitions, focuses, statistics, marriage arrangement. We've already done education is here. This is getting removed. These are traits that your character has. So this character is cynical, just, humble, and brave and you can see what they mean and what they do by hovering over them for example cynical means this character is a cynical non-believer disliked by the clergy but good at intrigue so you have a penalty to your monthly piety of minus 0 0.20 but you get an intrigue bonus of plus two there's a church opinion minus five but a same trade opinion plus five meaning church people don't like you as much but other cynical people do People who have an opposite trait, which I believe is zealous, but I couldn't be sure off the top of my head. It should indicate that, by the way. Little parentheses wouldn't hurt, guys. That is a minus five as well. So a zealous, I assume, person will not like you because you are cynical, and you will not like them because they're zealous. Um, the only other thing to really note is that 
some of these traits have a little number next to them. They are the seven virtues and vices. So for example, humble is humility, the seventh virtue and the opposite of pride. Humble characters gain piety, where proud characters gain prestige. And again, you have the same trait, opposite trait. You will like humble people more, and you will dislike proud people. Not all of these have binary features. Brave has the opposite being cowardly, but you know, they're just things. Uh, the only other things to really note on a character sheet that are important and again, we're playing this before Holy Fury came out. When Holy Fury comes out, I might remix this. It's the main size, which is the amount of land you are personally able to own and manage. This goes up with stewardship and your rank and some laws, so you can make this number pretty high. You can make it 10, 11, 12. These are things you're personally allowed to own. If you own more than this, your vassals will not like you, and you will have difficulty with managing it. You'll have less revenue from it. Vassal limit. This is how many people you're allowed to have under you. Remember how you are a duke? If you click the vassal tab here, you will see that you have an earl underneath you. He's the earl is a count tier title. And if I were to make a pyramid out of this, it would go baron, which is the little bronze guy, count, duke, king, emperor. We are at the top of our food chain. We are an independent duke, a petty king. It's important to keep in mind. Um, the only other thing I have to really call your attention to is the top right. There's the date, September 10, you know, 1066. So that's worth noting because historical events are happening around this time, right? England is, is going to be in a major war soon because that's when William the Conqueror takes over. Um, this little thing up here, this little gold coin, that's your wealth. If you hover over your wealth, it'll tell you exactly how much you have down to the third decimal. And it'll tell you what your balance is. You always want that number to be green. Uh, this is your prestige. There's stuff involved with this we might get into in another episode. The point is the higher the better. 2,000 is where you want to be. Uh, piety is related to the church. It's not as important, I don't think. This is, again, your domain level. This is your vassal level. This is your realm size. Don't worry about that too much. This is your score. Don't worry about that too much. So again, upon loading in as a new character, you get a blurb of information, which will help you. But once you get past that blurb of information, you want to click on your character portrait and just settle a couple of things. Make sure you have a husband or a wife. Make sure you have an heir. Uh, siblings are important too. You can marry them off for alliances. Uh, it will tell you with this little... Thing, what it will re result in, whether it's a non-aggression pact or whatever. Uh, experiment with that on your own. You know, look around the world and go, oh, Norway's powerful, an alliance with them is good. Oh, France is powerful, an alliance with them is good. Um, that's about it. I want to thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this particular little primer, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. In the next episode, we're going to go into the council tab, which when you first look at it is, oh my god, what the heck? But we're going to break down all of this next episode. And it's a lot. Some of these tabs are really simple, like the Societies tab. Some of them, like the Council tab, are really bad. They all have shortcuts. They're all important. And it's worth spending time on each of them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you are getting something out of this. And as always on this channel, La Paz.